Hi, this is Luana Lacone Winner, and before we get started on this painting, I'm going to use a little gloves in a bottle to protect my hands from the oil and um, products that we'll be using here in the studio. Just need a little pea-sized bit, rub it well in, and so let's go. Hi, this is Luana Lacone Winner. And one of the things that I find pastel artists doing is not taking advantage of other tools to make pastel painting easier. Oftentimes we find ourselves starting a painting that is a little too much time in the preparation. We all know that the underpainting in a pastel is critical to the way the values and the colors look in the upper layers. So I'd like to suggest something. When you buy fixative, many people often think of cans of fixative as a finished product, something that they spray on their pastels at the end of the painting. Not a good idea because pastel fixative, no matter what brand it is, you've got to be highly cautious. What happens oftentimes is that your dark colors go light and your light colors tend to take on a sheen and go uh, a little bit darker. So you've got to be cautious. What I would suggest is starting with a full-bodied painting and putting it on in such a way that you don't need that final layer of fixative. So consider using some of the other papers that are available, not just the fibrous papers, but ones that have coating that will take layer and layer and layer, and wet medium as well. The reason I suggest that is because Pastel fixative is also purchasable in small jars of liquid fixative without a spray nozzle, without the ability to spritz it on. What we can do is use a brush. Take, for instance, an idea of um, maybe a, a sand and sea sort of painting. If you were to put together, let's just do a small one like this, a little sand and sea painting, and you start putting on color, broadly as you normally would with the side of your pastel but come back into it with a second color and now take a brush any brush even if you have old watercolor brushes look what happens to the pastel it melts it melts under the use of the fixative and you can make the most beautiful underpainting, creating all types of layers and techniques, wetting, re-wetting, letting it dry in between. You understand that pastels are made with a powdered pigment and then it's mixed with something called gum tra tragacanth and some distilled water. So the pastels are at first wet before they're kneaded into dough. Now look at the difference in that color. What'll happen now is I can go back into it. In just a moment, it will dry enough to the touch that I can go back into it and add additional layers of color. Look how quickly. So if you're working outdoors, this is particularly fun because you know, sometimes the lighting situation and the conditions of the outdoors make it hard for you to stay in a location for very long. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orangier color, see if we can't add but you can see adding color. I can go back in one more time, two more times, five more times, as many times as I like and I can continue changing the quality of this color. It'll darken at first, and then as it dries, it lightens back up. But of course, now when it lightens up, it's going to have the addition of the other colors that have been added to it. So give this a try sometime. Next time you feel like experimenting a little, this can also be done with alcohol, with turpentine. You can try lots of different things. But be creative. And don't let dry pastels hold you back. Find ways of letting them add to your arsenal of tricks. We'll see you next time with a free art lesson.